Welcome to day 62. This is a Finnish folktale. Retold by Aaron Shepherd, and now by me. Once upon a time, there was a farmer, and he had two sons, a younger and an older. And one day the father said to the boys, Boys, it's time for you to find a wife. And in our family, we've always done it one way, and we always will. Now, the older brother was a little rude, and he interrupted. He said, yes, father, I know. We have to cut down a tree, and then the tree will fall, and it'll point towards where our sweetheart lives. That's right, said his father. That's what we do, and we always have, and always will. Mika, the younger brother, didn't have a sweetheart, but the older brother did and he knew how to cut it. His sweetheart lived in the town. And so he carefully chopped in such a way that when the tree fell, it pointed exactly towards the house where his sweetheart lived. Now, Mika, on the other hand, also thought he would probably try and make his tree fall towards the town because there were more people there. But whether he slipped with the ax or what happened, the fact of the matter was that when he chopped at his tree, it fell, pointing to the forest. And Mika's brother said, huh, What sort of wife will you find there? A fox or a wolf? Ha! And Mika didn't say anything, but he wondered the same question. And so they went. And Mika's older brother went towards his, where his sweetheart lived. And Mika set out into the forest. His large and many, many trees, but not a single house. And he thought, where will I find my sweetheart here? There's no one living here. And after many hours, when he was quite tired, he came to a little house. He opened the door. He thought, maybe my sweetheart lives here. He opened the door, and there was nothing and no one. All that way for nothing, he said. But then he heard a little voice saying, Maybe not. And he turned and there was a little mouse. Did you speak to me? said Mika. Indeed I did. Why don't you tell me who you are and what you came here for? Well, Mika had never talked to a mouse before, but he was polite and so he said, my name's Mika, and I came here looking for a sweetheart. Oh, I'll be your sweetheart, said the mouse. I'll be your sweetheart. But you're a mouse. I, I know, but I'm, I would love you and take care of you and my, feel my fur. It's very smooth and soft. And Mika felt it and petted the little mouse and thought how beautifully soft it was. And as he stroked her, she sang. Mika, sweetheart, will I be? What a fine young man is he! Cloth of velvet I do wear, like a princess fine and rare. And Mika thought, well, you are very sweet, and I do, your eyes are so large and shining, you can be my sweetheart. Oh, Mika, that is wonderful. I will make you such a good sweetheart. Yes. Bye-bye. And so he set off for home, wondering what on earth he had just done, getting betrothed to a mouse. When he got home, much later that day, the father said, Well, sons, how did it go? Did you find your sweethearts? Yes, my sweetheart has rosy cheeks and long golden hair, said the older brother. What about your sweetheart, Mika? Did she have a velvet coat? My sweetheart has a dress of the most beautiful grey velvet, said Mika. And no one said anything. The next day the father said, well, boys, today I need your 
sweethearts, to prove their worth. And I need you to ask them to weave some linen and I can judge their skills as they're fit to be your wives. And so Mika's brother set off to ask his sweetheart to weave some linen. And so did Mika. He walked again for many, many hours through the forest and once more found his way to the little house. And there was the mouse waiting on her little table. Oh, she said, I just fell over. I was so surprised to see you. Is today our wedding day? Is today our wedding day? No, not yet. No. You look so glum, Mika. What's wrong? My father says I have to ask you to weave some cloth. But how can you do that? You're only a mouse. Ah, maybe. Why don't you rest and I'll see? And Mika was very tired. He had been walking a long time. So he lay down and rested. And while he rested, she sang a little song. Mika, sweetheart, will I be? What a fine young man is he? Cloth of linen I will weave. I'll be done when he must leave. And Mika closed his eyes and went to sleep. He's going to sleep on his tummy. There we go. And then, as soon as he was asleep, the little mouse took her little tiny sleigh bell that she had on the table and she rang it. And immediately, out of all the walls and all the skirtings of the house came hundreds of little mice. Quick, 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 she said, quick, run outside and each of you bring back a, a blade of flax. And they whoosh, they were gone. And then they all came back, each with a blade of flax. And they spun it on the spinning wheel. And some of them pulled the thread, and some of them rode the wheel, and some of them went up and down on the pedals until they had yards and yards and yards of wonderful thread. And then they wove it onto the loom, and they started to weave. And some of them ran the little shuttle across, whoosh, and some of them worked the beaters, whoosh, 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 and some of them did the foot pedal, and it was like, whoosh, poof, whoosh, until they had made the most wonderful yardage of cloth. They gave it to the little mouse. She folded it all up and put it inside a nut. And the mice vanished. She rang a bell. And Mika woke. <sighs> oh gosh, what a long sleep. I have made the wool for you, the cloth for you, said the little mouse, and she gave him the nut, and he took it, not really knowing what it was, and carried it home. Goodbye, goodbye. And away he went with the nut, back through the forest, all the way to his home. And there, once again, was his father and his older brother, and the father said, So, boys... I don't know why you call them boys, they're definitely young men. So young men of mine, sons. How did your sweetheart go? Let's see the cloth that she has woven. And Mika's brother produced a very fine homespun cloth. And the father took it and looked at it and said, Hmm, yes, it's a good, strong, good quality. Good for folks like us. Perfectly adequate. Well done. And now, Mika, what did your sweetheart weave? And Mika said, she gave me this for you, father. And his father took it. And Mika's brother said, what? You asked for cloth and she gave you a nut. But Mika's father had found a little thread and he opened the nut and he pulled the thread and out came yard upon yard upon yard of the finest lace, linen, I mean, it was just so much of it, and it was so fine and so beautifully made. And Mika's father said, Well, your sweetheart certainly knows how to weave fabric. 
This is the most wonderful linen I have ever seen. And Mika too was looking at it and going, my goodness gracious me, what an extraordinary thing. But he said nothing. And so the next day the father said, well that evening he said, tomorrow boys, we're going to have a wedding. That's the way we've always done it and that's the way we always will. So go find your sweetheart and bring her here and let us have a great wedding beside the river. Off you go. And so they went. Mika went to find his sweetheart and tell her that today, or rather tomorrow morning, was going to be the wedding. Off you go, Mika. Go find your sweetheart. And Mika went with a heavy heart, because really, how do you bring home a mouse and tell all your friends and family that you're marrying a mouse? Oh, Mika, is today our wedding day? Is it today? Yes, said Mika with a big sigh. Why so sad? Isn't it wonderful? We're going to be married today. But what are all my friends going to think? What will they think? Marrying a mouse? Yes, they might think that, said the little mouse. But what do you think? What do you feel? And he looked at her with her big bright eyes and her beautiful fur and her quivering little nose and whiskers and said, I like you the way you are. Never mind them. Let us be married. And so she rang her little bell and straight away, as fast as she could, he could imagine, whoosh, a little carriage appeared led by two mice. Well, Mika, are you going to help me down? And he helped her into the carriage. And then she set off at some speed for the river. And Mika had to run to catch up. And as they drove along, she sang a little song. And she sang, Mika, sweetheart, will I be? What a fine young man is he! In a carriage I will ride when I go to be his bride. And so they rode and they came to a great river, which was where the wedding was going to be held beside the river. There were many people, especially Mika's father and Mika's brother and Mika's sweetheart. And finally Mika arrived running behind the carriage in which his bride was riding. Actually, there were four mice, but I don't have four mice. And there they were. What's this? said Mika's brother. A mouse? You're marrying a mouse? Yes, this is my sweetheart. Well, I never saw anything so ridiculous, said Mika's brother, and he kicked the carriage and the mouse and the carriage and the little mouse in the middle into the swiftly flowing river. What have you done? What have you done? You've killed my sweetheart. Well, she was only a mouse. I know, but I loved her. And he was just about to have a fight with his brother when Mika's father called out, Mika, look! And out of the water there came Four black horses pulling the carriage behind them, a beautiful carriage, a full-size carriage. And in the carriage was a beautiful, wet, a beautiful princess, all with her clothes, all wet. And Mika looked at her and said, What? Are you the mouse? Yes, I'm the mouse. Aren't you going to help me down? And he took her hand and helped her down. And there they were beside the river. And she said, I'm very wet, Mika, I might have to change. But how come you're not a mouse? Ah, a spell was cast on me. And I would only ever be transformed back into being a princess if one brother were to love me and be willing to marry me and one brother wanted to kill me. And so it has happened. 
let us be married. Find me some dry clothes, Mika, and let us be married. And they were married. Mika's brother was a little bit jealous, but his sweetheart was pretty nice, so he really was okay. And Mika's father wouldn't really take his eyes off his new daughter-in-law. They were very surprised. And the next day they went together back to the cottage, which turned out to no longer be a little cottage, but was a fine castle with many servants and many joyful events where people came and danced and sang with the princess and her sweetheart Mika. And they were very happy. And if they ever had children, you probably know how they would decide who they would marry. Yes, even if they had daughters, those daughters would cut down trees and see which way they would point. And they wouldn't waste the tree. Oh no, they made beautiful things. Their sons and daughters were very, very handy. And so that was the story of the little mouse, the little mouse princess. And maybe your little bell you would like to. Thank you for watching.